Mm-hmm. So what do you think this would do to the development of rugby in Africa? Oh, well, I think Africa still has a long way to go in terms of development. Uh, if the South Africans can come in a lot more and manage, manage rugby in Africa, I think uh, we, might, we might be going somewhere. Mm. So, um, I don't know what the federations can do, but uh, I think we need to support the South Africans. We need more of them into, inside the, um, the, the African rugby uh, board. Mm. A lot of people look at you, uh, no disrespect to tell yeah. a lot of people look at you and you're not a typical, you yeah. know, rugby build. Yeah. And judging by your physique. What, what position do you play? Yeah, fly off. That's 10. And you don't get you a lot need of... You need to see as <laughs> he's going between <laughs> when he's running for carries, football, well, actually, football. Actually, football. The, the secret to that is, is you, you need to start early. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think that's something we need to work on in Nigeria. We need to go to schools, we need to start teaching, you know, the young kids um, from age 12, 13, they should be playing, you know, some kind of rugby. And then by the time they're 19, 17, 18, 19, they're ready to go. Mm. They're ready to play for the national team. I'm looking at you, you're a clean guy. <laughs> you know, these well, guys really think that rugby is a rough yeah. sport. Well, I, I, I always have to dispel some, some of the rumors, mm. you know. I mean, a lot of ladies actually look, yeah. look at rugby on, on TV and like, my son is not going to play. Yeah, yeah well, well that perception us. is changing at the moment. You yeah. know, we have parents coming to us to say, ah, mm-hmm. oh, I want my kids to actually play because oh. they find out that when they go to UK, um, some schools in the UK, most schools in the UK actually only you know, play rugby. And if your son or your, your you ward is not good, yeah, exactly, you get a scholarship for playing rugby. So uh, I've had scores of parents coming to me and say, yeah, when are you going to start teaching our kids and all? So we're designing a program for that, you know, and it's going to kick off soon. Mm. Let's, let's bring um, the technical director into the discussion, Antonji uh, Fashimoye. Uh, let's talk administration of rugby in Nigeria. It's September. Have you guys met some of the objectives you lined up at the start of the year? Everything we all surpassed our, wow. um, our expectation. It's not. It has not been easy anyway. But uh, because of the kind of uh, people we have on board, you know, we, we've we've, um, we've think that outside the box and we've ensured that um, we for every target we set for ourselves. That talking about our calendar, we've gone way past what we've set. And in the league. Uh, the league is superb because you know it's the first of its kind and to be honest with you our league is the biggest in west africa Whoa. because um, we have um, four four three regions anyway we have the north the north is divided into two we have the north central we also have the northeast we also have the southwest uh, south south and southeast and why we have the south south so it's um three big leagues running you know together Something. during the simultaneously the course of the year as an, as an administrator you know on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate the interest? He said, you know, some of the perceptions we have yeah. already changed. Yeah. How would you rate the interest? Because I mean, no matter how the good plans you have, you still yeah. need people need to play. Follow. You need following, and you need people to play the game. Yeah. So, on a scale of one to ten, level of interest here in Nigeria. Well, to be honest with you, uh, looking judging by our database, um, when we actually took over in um, two years ago, um, I can I can tell you categorically that um, it has, our database has increased by more than 100 percent. Okay. So judging by that, I'll tell you that when it comes to participation of um, clubs, I'll tell you that um, we've really done well. Yeah. All right. Mm. Yeah. Then follow-up, you know, we need more publicity and, you know, by the time we start publicizing all these things and people know, they are aware about rugby, you know, I'm sure we'll get more followers. But you need to come to Independent Sevens and see what's happening there. The we last, were getting ready for the last, it and now the year has been postponed. No, it's going to be fun because the last, uh, the last one we held last year, we had a lot of people there, a lot of expatriates and everything. And this year is bigger because we have Western Province coming from South Africa. We have the UR Sevens coming from Kenya and we also have um, the Rangers coming from the UK. So it's, going to, it's bigger than what we did last year. So sure. I, I, Yeah, okay. sorry, I just want to quickly ask this before I forget. How many slots... Uh, will be for Africa for, for Rio 2016? Um, for Africa, we have two slots. Just South two. Africa has already grabbed one. Wow. Wow. So we are wow. going to fight for one. But, but there's a twist to it. We, there's also a spot for the reportage. So the team that comes second in this tournament, the Olympic qualifiers, will, be, will go for that tournament. Okay. And if they win that tournament, then uh, we have three okay. African slots. It's like slots. a qualifying tournament for yes. All right, uh, I don't know if we have uh, like age grade uh, national teams, you know, for, for rugby. If we do have, uh, how many are there? And, um, you know, what really are the benefits, you know, playing a rugby really? Well, um, as, as, as for now, what we have is we have um, age grade, uh, we've, we've classified um, our players 
and we've not had that opportunity for the past four years to actually take them for tournaments. But as it is, this present administration, we have we've greeted those players, yeah. and we are speaking with the um, our international body to say we have these teams, and if you have tournaments, you know we can always come for the tournament. We've not we've never disappointed them in terms of tournament. In fact, we're even looking at hosting a tournament next year. Mm. Uh, we'll reveal that to you when the time comes and everything. Okay. So, Tell us the new details for uh, this year's Independence Rugby Sevens. Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, we tend to improve every year. Mm. Uh, the biggest we've had was um, we had um, Marlins from UK and also we had um, we have Malins from UK and we have the Egypt, uh, Egypt Alexandria Rugby from Egypt. But this time we, have, we are expanding. We actually reach out to uh, URL, um, Rangers from UK. We also have um, the Western, Western Province, which is a very big side in South Africa. They're also coming. And we also have the UR7 Kenya, which is basically you have the national team players for Kenya in that um, club. So it's a big thing. And what we're trying to do is actually to use that tournament to prepare ourselves for the for the um, Olympic qualifiers okay. because we'll be inviting our foreign based players. We're going to um, give them a slot to form a team so that we can actually assess them and see the ones that we can we can pick to join the home. home okay. Home uh, are players. you guys thinking of a mini league sort of um, probably a competition that will involve you and some other countries, you know, so that keep you know, keep the Black Star Lions occupied? Well, we, we are going to work on that next year because it's kind of expensive, you know, taking the Black Star. In, in terms of sevens, you know, we have 15s, we have sevens. Sevens, we can only um, take our Black Star Lions out for competitions. Talking about the sevens competition like Dubai, Dubai sevens and um, Cape Town. You know, we have a lot of sevens tournaments running. Okay. We can always take them for those tournaments. But All in right. terms of 15s, the only thing we can do is actually to organize friendly matches between uh, f between Nigeria and other countries. Okay. okay. Let's get Skipo talking before we wrap this up. Um, you guys were super ready for the Africa World C Cup in Lusaka. I uh, well, we hope you gain qualification. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was um, it was a good experience. Pretty good, wonderful experience for the guys. Um, uh, judging by the fact that um, it was a predominant home based team, you know, we just had a few like two foreign based, and um, we really wanted to qualify, believe me. You. But what happened was that uh, Zambia proved very difficult in the first game. Mm. We tried to beat them, the pressure we put on them in the last stages of that game, <laughs> you know, was very, very enormous. But they were able to scale through that. But then we went on in the next game to beat Zimbabwe A. Mm. which has never happened before. Mm. So um, I think the guys really put in 100% effort, 200% effort, you know, in doing that. And it's like a, an improvement from our 2013 show, show, out, show, show piece. We went to Zoom, uh, Botswana and mm. we, we, were, we had bronze medal in it. Mm. And then we went to Zambia, we had silver. So as the vice president rightly right, said, we're going to host the next one. Maybe we're going to win it okay. and then get into the mm -hmm. Cup 1B. They said we should go, but... Sorry, let me have to just... Yeah. Let me add to what you said. You see, um, if you want to develop sports, you know, you have to look at the grassroots. We have oh, lots of players playing exactly. abroad. But what we're trying to do is to actually... Let's have a route. And the only way we can have a route is to involve the local players because that's the only way we can sustain what we have. And that's why you see that most of these tournaments, we always lay more focus on the home base players. We only pick few foreign base players to add little experience. But now we've been able to do that. And now I think the, the local base players, they understand more what we need. So now what we're trying to do is expand our horizon and trying to now let it balance. We want a mix of the foreign and a mix of the local. So don't be shocked that the Olympics qualifier, we can, we can actually shock the world. Any place for women's rugby in Nigeria? Yes, yes, yes. If you come to the Pen you see our girls. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to see those girls. <laughs> and, uh, but as is, we were living. Uh, look, look, at, look at the technical director and then look at me. Who would you like to have in your team? <laughs> look at us. <laughs> I, like, I like to have both of you. Uh -huh. <laughs> because uh -huh. I know if I'm playing, I'm, if I'm playing with both of you, I'm secured. Behind yeah, you, right? I, mean, I don't have to get sure, involved. Just make sure you defense. drill him very and well. And then I have to know. Uh, yeah, we can, yeah, we can fit him for a flyer. That's what uh -huh, we get. Flyer. And then he can go as a scrum off. I was like, oh, <laughs> just get us water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's a position for everybody around. Yeah. Mm, the big guys, the short guys, the tall guys. Yeah, yeah, the just mess with my guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, of course, you, you also have to have pace, right? Sure, definitely. Our mm -hmm. pace is uh, very essential. Mm -hmm. rugby. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tunji Fashimoye, the technical director of Nigeria Rugby Federation. We'll be talking about rugby in Nigeria. We love it. Tunji? Well, it's been so much fun talking sports. 
sports and uh, we're really having so much fun here but uh, we have to go we have to go it's been a wonderful time with us not to worry we'll be here again same time next week on monday to talk sports like we always do so remember to always keep a date with us i'm yours truly ayatunde balu well, we know you enjoyed this. We're going to do it again. But first, enjoy your weekend. We'll do this again on Monday. And then at the bar. Remember, you can keep talking to us on Twitter. We're channels on the sports. And on Facebook, we're channels. Hyphen Sports. 9 p.m. We'll be back again to talk some more sports. I'm Austin Okonakwana. Until then, in everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now.